dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Amelia Lee. There are new questions tonight about the relationship between President-elect Donald Trump and Elon Musk and what influence the tech titan will have in the next Trump administration. Axios reports that Trump put Musk on the phone with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky when they spoke on Wednesday. This is all unfolding as Trump quickly assembles his new administration with his new chief of staff, Susie Wiles, aiming for a calmer White House this time around. We get details from CBS's Robert Costa. President-elect Donald Trump is moving rapidly to staff up his administration with his pick for White House Chief of Staff Susie Wiles in charge. A new Axios report says Elon Musk was on a call between Trump and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky this week, underscoring that the billionaire Trump supporter has a seat at the table as Trump navigates his return to power. Musk's Starlink satellite service has been a central issue in Ukraine's war with Russia, with controversies erupting over its use and scope and how it's paid for, as Ukraine has worked to fend off Russia since the 2022 invasion. And we're very close to a world war. Dealing with the Russia-Ukraine conflict, plus the fighting in Gaza and Lebanon, and Iranian and Chinese aggression could top the to-do list for Trump's next foreign policy team. Seen as a front-runner for Secretary of State is Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty. Also being floated is former ambassador to Germany Rick Grinnell and Florida Senator Marco Rubio. The only way to make America wealthy and safe and strong again is to make Donald J. Trump our president again. For the CIA, John Ratcliffe, Trump's former director of national intelligence, is widely mentioned. And for defense, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is seen as a possibility. One intense focus inside Trump's inner circle is who will be nominated for attorney general, especially after Trump railed against the Justice Department for prosecuting him. It's called the weaponization of the FBI, the DOJ. They were all coming. Names being mentioned by Trump insiders include Matt Whitaker, who was acting AG in Trump's first term, plus former Florida AG Pam Bondi, who backed Trump throughout his impeachments and his legal challenges. And if he's out there fighting for us, we're going to fight for him. With Trump planning to extend his tax cuts and impose sweeping tariffs, two Wall Street names, among several others, are in the mix for Treasury Secretary, hedge fund leader Scott Besant, and financial executive Howard Lutnick, who is a co-chair of Trump's transition team. What in the world are we doing? We're letting the rest of the world eat our lunch. At this point, just days after the election, people close to the president-elect tell me things are very fluid and he will spend the weekend working and taking calls about his options. One top source told me Trump is in listening mode, hearing out what people are looking to do and who is being recommended before finalizing his own shortlist. Robert Costa, CBS News, Washington. Next week, Congress is back in Washington for its final period of this session before a new set of lawmakers are sworn in next year. At the top of their to-do list, preventing another government shutdown. Funding for it is said to run out on December 20th. Earlier this week, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell did not give many clues about what's next for lawmakers. Senate Republicans will vote on who will replace Senator McConnell as party leader next week. We are going to have to finish figure out how to finish up the year, and that always involves a conversation between Senator Schumer and myself uh, as to uh, how we wrap it up, but those conversations haven't started yet. Senate Republicans will vote on who will replace Senator McConnell as party leader next week. Senator McConnell had been serving in the role since 2021. Kentuckians voted no on Amendment 2, one of the constitutional amendments that was on the ballot this election. The amendment proposed allowing Kentucky lawmakers to use tax money to fund private and charter schools. Those who were against the amendment, like Tiffany Combs with Perry County Schools, says this is a big win for students on the other side. Tim Crawford with Red Bird Christian School says relying on private funds is becoming a bigger challenge. Today's um, economies for the world and for the particularly the United States, uh, charitable giving is really down. And so there's more and more pressure for us to be able to find sources of funding to be able to continue uh, here at Redbird Christian School. 
honestly, as it is, public schools are underfunded. So I think that this gives us the opportunity to look at how we can make sure that every student has success. You know, address the, the teacher shortage or universal pre-K for everyone across the state. Um, there's just so many things that we can do to improve success, but reducing public education funding is definitely not one of those. Combs says cutting funds for public schools would make it more challenging to address issues like the teacher shortage. And Crawford says Redbird is always looking for new ways to find outside funding. The Lexington Fayette NAACP says they have received reports of racist texts being sent to people in the state. The messages are similar to those that are being seen pop up throughout the country in recent days. Many reference being picked to be a slave. Police with University of Kentucky say they were notified of the messages popping up on college campuses, specifically other college in the Southeastern Conference. A man accused of killing a Scott County deputy in May of 2023 could have his trial moved to Jefferson County. Stephen Sheehan Shang is accused of shooting and killing deputy Caleb Conley during a traffic stop in court this week. His attorney argued that he will not be able to get a fair trial in Scott County and suggested it be moved to Jefferson County because of the larger population. The judge in the case proposed Shelby County because it's out of the news coverage area. The judge will enter an order on whether the trial will be moved and to where at a later date. As the jury continues to deliberate on the fate of the Delphi murder suspect, a judge gives the jury instructions. Richard Allen is charged with killing two teen girls in the small town of Delphi, Indiana in February 2017. Prosecutors say he confessed more than 60 times to murdering Abby Williams and Libby German while he was in prison. The judge defined facts, interferences, and direct evidence and reminded the jury that Allen's decision not to testify can't be held against him. Jurors will continue to deliberate from 9 to 4 each day until they reach a verdict. In Rockcastle County, there were many folks without water in Livingston due to a dispute between city government and the water company. We were told water is now back on for 65 American water customers who were impacted. But state police had subpoenaed financial documents and audits from city leaders. A deal has been worked out with Wood Creek Water District, but with the city in debt, many are not sure if Livingston is capable of running their own public water system. The EPA wants to know how many lead pipes are being used in Kentucky's water system. The EPA required that all water companies submit lists of their service line materials by October 16th. Kentucky's Energy and Environment cabinets say more than 98% have provided that data. Some water lines in the state are made of an unknown material. Some could even be lead. In the next 30 days, the Energy and Environment Cabinet says most Kentuckians will get a notice from their water company, telling them their lines are either unknown, lead, or galvanized iron. Here we go, your first alert. It has everything lit up in green, meaning A-OK, -okay for at least the next 24 hours. It's when we get into Saturday night going into Sunday that the rain chances will start to pick up. But we had that break today. The rain chances will return as we go throughout the weekend. They really ramp up as we go throughout the day on Sunday. Then Monday morning we'll see rain. Then it's out of here, clearing out for Tuesday. Then Wednesday, Thursday, we see another round of rain pushing through. But all in all, the temperatures are going to remain above normal until we get into Thursday going into Friday. We go from the upper 60s on Wednesday to the upper 50s, low 60s for Thursday and Friday. Let's talk about the weekend, shall we? Saturday, we'll see temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s. You can see Jackson at 71, 69 in Hazard, uh, over towards the uh, Pikeville area, 71. Prestonsburg, 71 as well. We'll keep that chance of showers in the forecast. And then for Sunday, we'll see temperatures in the mid 60s from top to bottom. And again, that increased shower chances in the forecast. Let's go ahead and time out the weekend using future view, shall we? We'll start the clock at 7 a.m. You can see right there, make sure sun and clouds will be the rule. The clouds will thicken as we go throughout the afternoon and evening hours by Saturday night. There's the rain chance that's going to continue to push through as we go throughout the morning hours of your Sunday. Heavy rain, not out of the question. Maybe a rumble of thunder or two as we go throughout the afternoon as well. Then by the evening hours, we'll keep a stray shower in plan. As mentioned, that'll continue into the early morning hours of Monday. Then the wind's going to shift 
as we go into Monday afternoon going into the evening hours. That's what's going to clear us out and keep us clear for Tuesday. Now in terms of rainfall over the next five days from Pikeville down to Middlesbrough over towards uh, let's say Monticello. Some places could pick up as much as a half to three quarters of an inch. The areas shaded in blue is from Louisa to Moorhead. Jackson and London, some places could easily pick up an inch of rain, and we really need that rain. Look at this. We're just over six inches below normal for the entire year. Entire year, 6.04 to be exact. 68 was our high today after a morning start of 55 outside. Right now we have patchy fog out there. Our temperature right now is at 46. Dew points at 46. Humidity's at 100% with a calm wind out there at this hour. So you're noticing this rain off towards the west. You can see it right here. This is our weather maker as we go into the day on Saturday or evening hours of Saturday going into the day on Sunday. Highs on Saturday going back into the upper 60s. The ARH seven day forecast for the weekend is always in view. It takes us to 69 for Saturday, mid 60s for Sunday and Monday, 64 Tuesday, 69 for Wednesday. Then there's that cold front where we drop the temperatures into the upper 50s, low 60s for Thursday going into Friday. That's the latest first alert forecast. Amelia. All right, Eric, thank you. Organizations in the Pikeville community are working to give back to those in need, watching that need increase as the temperatures decrease. The East Kentucky Green Dream Center and Pikeville Community Kitchen are two of several organizations in the area that provide free meals and resources to the unhoused and underfed communities. The kitchen now serves breakfast every morning, Monday through Friday, hoping to reach more people in need. That breakfast is added to the calendar alongside lunch programs that are available every weekday, with organizations saying it takes a village to meet the growing needs. I think a lot of people don't understand how big of a need and how other people need this type of stuff. Um, you know, we work together with all the other organizations in the community. I feel like that is a work of God. I feel like God has joined us together the, to serve. Dream Center officials say they are always accepting donations and volunteers, especially as we approach the holidays. Find out more about that over on our website, WYMT.com. A Southern Kentucky postal carrier is being called a hero for helping save a man's life. Stanford carrier Connor Durbin was recognized Friday with the Postmaster General Hero Award. She was on her route in Lincoln County back in July when she heard someone calling for help. She later discovered Kevin Stamper in a ditch with his riding lawnmower on top of him. Stamper said despite calling for help, no one heard him, but he firmly believes Durbin's actions saved his life. Yeah, I was laying there and I said, Lord, if you don't send an angel of mine away, I said, pretty soon, I said, I don't think I can stand much longer. And I'd say within about five minutes, she pulled up. I didn't expect anything. I didn't, but maybe God put me there for a reason. Maybe I was running early that day for a reason. Stamper said he and his wife returned from vacation early, and their mail was still on hold. So it's remarkable that Durbin even stopped since there wasn't any mail for them that day. Thank you for joining us tonight. Armando Berry will have highlights and scores from across the coverage area. Eric Sports Overtime is coming your way right after this break. W